Today I'm going to talk about a trick to calculate the square root of a number with a very simple formula. And the formula goes as follows. x squared plus a divided by 2x. And let me give you an example so that you understand what this all means. Okay, let's take the square root of 66. Okay, 66 can be written as 64 plus 2. So 64 in this case, you can take the square root of. That's that x squared over here. Okay, so based on this, we can say that x equals 8, right? Because x squared is 64. A is something we would like to calculate, but that's 66, or the square root thereof, rather. So that's 66. And now we have an ability to fill this formula out, and we say, okay, that's 64 plus 66 divided by 2 times 8. That is 130 divided by 16, and that's, let's see, 8.125. Okay, so if you know the exact or the more accurate result, it is 8.12404. So that's really very close to the 8.125 using this formula. Okay, now let's first analyze what the error is for the various values of the square root. So in order to do that, I printed out essentially two plots. The plot over here goes from 0 to 100, so all square roots are taken from a 0 to 100, and the plot on the right hand side goes from 101 all the way up to 1000. And I plotted the error, so what did I plot? I plotted the approximation, the formula we are using, minus the exact value, right? Of course limited by the computer, and you take the absolute value of that and you plot that for a between 0 and 100. And what you see is you get this, right? So it, the error becomes smaller and smaller and smaller uh, when you go up higher in A. And it holds the same for uh, if you go from 100 to all the way up to 1000 over here in this plot. Okay? So for instance, if you have relatively small numbers, the absolute error is about 0 0.03 between the real value and the approximated value. If you go for higher numbers than that, what we saw with 64, it's already very, very small, right? And you see that if you go in the area of 100, the error is only 0 0.005 in absolute values compared to the real value, of course, again, limited by the computer, okay? So the method works really, really well. Now the question now obviously is, how do you derive this method? And we can do that in the following way. We can rewrite the square root of a in the following form. We can say, okay, I'm going to write it as an x squared plus a delta. And that x squared in this case is that 64 here. Okay? So you write it in a square that you can actually take the square root of. Okay? Plus whatever remains. And that whatever remains is usually relatively small. And therefore, you have the ability to develop that in a Taylor series, for instance. So we can rewrite this a little bit more. We take x out. We still have the square root here. But now we get 1 plus delta divided by x squared. And this number is now really, really small, right, compared to 1. So now you can confidently develop that in a Taylor series. So let's, as a side note, calculate what the Taylor series is of 1 plus a small delta here. Okay? And that's just a delta. That's not this number, of course, but it's a delta like this, for instance, a small number. Let's call it delta to the small delta to uh, avoid confusion. When we develop this around 0, so for delta is very close to zero, we get the following in a Taylor series expansion. We get df d delta, of course, developed at delta equals zero, times delta, plus higher order terms, right? Plus terms quadratic in delta. 
So if we work this out, we get one plus df d delta. So we have to differentiate this with respect to delta. You get 0 0.5 divided by the square root of one plus delta times the derivative of this, which happens to be one. We develop that around delta equals zero times delta. Okay, so what you end up getting is one plus delta divided by two. Okay, plus terms, of course, smaller terms and also here, but I'm gonna not talk about those because we're only gonna take the first two terms here all the way up to delta. Okay, so translate it here. What that means is that you get something like x one plus, and now this delta here is obviously this whole thing. So you get delta divided by x squared times that half. Okay, times the half we have there. And that's the result. So now we can actually work this out a little bit more. Let's do that over here. So we get our square root of a, okay, is now nothing more than x. And you get here 2x squared plus delta over 2x squared is 1 over 2x times one, uh, 2x squared plus delta. Now the delta is the difference, of course, between what you had in this case, delta was two here. So that is nothing more than a minus x squared, okay, in this case. So if you fill that out, you get one over two x, two x squared plus the delta, which is a minus x squared. So that gives you as an answer, x squared plus a divided by two x. And that's that square root of a. Okay, so there you have your result. Now you might wonder, when you see this, here we assumed that delta is a plus, of course, right? Delta was a plus here, because you had, as an example here, 64 plus 2, so you get a plus. But what if you have uh, 62, for instance, right? Then you get a minus here. Right? Then you get x squared minus delta, and you have to do the calculation, you get a minus here. But at that point, delta is not a minus x squared, but delta is x squared minus a. Okay? So you get the same result if you work that out for the other case. You get exactly this result. Okay? So I think this is a really cool example to calculate the square root of a number with this simple formula with quite good accuracy okay i think this is a great place to stop if you like this video please like please share and please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one